at this story that broke this week in Arizona. Arizona Republicans try to pump $1 million into a private prison for non-existent inmates. Now, this is a situation where they have a contract with a prison company, and we had a lot of these contracts put in after Reagan put in the zero tolerance and the mandatory minimum prison sentences in 1984 for part of the drug war. That was when he went from going after the people who were supplying drugs to the end user. That was something that we had not seen during alcohol prohibition. And while we're talking about alcohol prohibition, while we're talking about a constitutional convention that people are trying to uh, get involved here, let's understand that they don't pay any attention to the Constitution as it is right now. It took a constitutional amendment to prohibit alcohol, didn't it? And it took another one to make it legal again after to undo that amendment. Why did it take a constitutional amendment to make alcohol prohibition illegal? Because clearly in the Constitution, they had no authority to do that. The Tenth Amendment makes it clear that any powers that are not expressly, explicitly delegated to the federal government, they don't have. And they did not have the explicit permission to prohibit anything. Alcohol, shoelaces, marijuana, it doesn't matter. They don't have the legal authority to do it. Now, the difference between the 1920s and the 21st century is that in the 1920s, they took the Constitution seriously. They don't even take it seriously. Why would we even bother to have a constitutional convention if we've got a bunch of crooks who don't take their oath seriously, who don't pay any attention to what's in the Constitution? They now prohibit everything. And you can't do anything, whether it is a prescription drug or whether it's uh, vitamins in many cases are trying to outlaw vitamins or whether it's recreational drugs. Everything is prohibited unless expressly permitted by the FDA. That's the way they have turned this on its head. So when Reagan started with mandatory minimums sentencing and he started with zero tolerance, that was a new thing. They started putting so many people in jail that they were having to let violent criminals out. Rapists and murderers are being turned out because their hands were tied. They had to follow the orders of the federal government, or so they said. Actually, they were following the orders so they could get the money from the federal government. That's the way the government, all, the feds always work. So we created this massive system of private prisons. And what is that doing? That's putting a pull on the arrest records. Look at these statistics. It costs nearly four times as much to keep an inmate in jail for a year as it costs to send a child to school for a year. We have 5% of the global population, but we have 25% of the world's prisoners. We have more prisoners than China does, and they've got a country that is many times larger than ours in population. We've got one in 15 black men are in prison, and we have one in 13 African Americans unable to vote due to laws that deny the right to vote to ex-felons. And of course, people are being arrested for things that in many cases do not threaten other people. In many cases, as we've talked about with uh, marijuana, quite frankly, whatever your position is on marijuana legalization, the government doesn't have the authority, the federal government does not have the authority to, prohib to prohibit that. If they did, there wouldn't be a constitutional amendment to prohibit alcohol, but let's take a look at this Arizona story here. Private prison company GEO Group coaxed about a million dollars out of Arizona Republicans despite assertions by the State Department of Corrections that the money's not needed based on the state's contract with the GEO Group. Now, this is a guy, he's a uh, Republican, his name is Kavanaugh, and he said, well, last week they came back and they said, uh, look, uh, can you give us like uh, at least $900,000? Ah, I thought that was reasonable, so he sticks it in the budget at the very last minute. Now, they came back, the GEO group had a uh, re reaction to this, and they say that they have a contract with the state of Arizona that provides uh, for annual inflationary cost adjustments. They haven't received one since 2007. The requested increase this year would have represented a 2% inflationary adjustment. Well, fine, but that doesn't explain why it was put in at the last minute very quietly like that, and that's the way it's being represented by... Chad Campbell, a Democrat from Phoenix, he said it was slipped in the last minute, obviously behind closed doors. GEO happened to donate more than $2,500 to Kavanaugh's 2012 campaign, according to documents from the Arizona Secretary of State. It's absolutely amazing to see this. Now, Arizona, like many places, has contracts with these private prisons where they're guaranteed 95 to 100 percent occupancy in these private prisons. Now, the prison system in question, they have a 97% occupancy. They've got 2,466 out of 2,530 
prison beds occupied. Isn't that great? We've got the police doing their job, aren't they? You know, occupy, filling up those prisons for the private companies who then use these guys as slave labor to boot. It's a very, very corrupt system. And in Arizona, all but one House Republican supported the measure. They need to get that guy's name and give him a pat on the back. But there's a great article that came out from Dave Hodges. I saw it on dcclothesline.com, and he really pulls this back. This is a bipartisan problem. This is something that started with Reagan, but it is something that has continued on through the Democrat administrations of Clinton and of Obama. And he points out that Obama is making money on privatized prisons and slave labor. It's not just a Republican situation. They're both involved in this. And he points out, of course, as I just mentioned, that this goes back to 1984 when Reagan stepped up the war on drugs and took it to the end user. But he says, and he's writing from Arizona. He says, your state is my state. And it has political whores that are beholden to privatized prison globalist corporations. And it's time the facts behind the privatization of prisons are told. And this conspiracy reaches right to the White House. We're going to be back with more information about this right after the break. And we're going to have a review of Captain America. So stay tuned. Jakari Jackson and Leanne McAdoo are going to give us their take on it from last night. The response has been overwhelming, and for that, we say thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel, one of the founders of New Mana Food Storage. You've let us know how much you love our GMO-free and great-tasting storable food. Now, you can help a veteran enjoy that same great taste. Part of every purchase from New Mana will be donated to help a veteran in need enjoy their next meal. Buy with confidence. Buy the best. Buy New Mana. Call 877-817-9829 or visit PowerPrepper.com. New Mana, food storage you'll love to eat. Every day it becomes more clear our nation is headed towards an uncertain future. Nothing can ensure your family's security like an Atlas Survival Shelter. The strongest money can buy and designed to be buried up to 42 feet deep with all the comforts of home and all the protection you need. Bulletproof hatches, tamper-resistant air pipes, and a unique ground design that'll withstand a bomb. See them today at IWantThatBunker.com or call 1-855-4-BUNKER. Atlas Survival Shelters. Better prepared than scared. It's been said, those who control the food, control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, April the 4th, 2014. I'm David Knight, and we were talking just before the break about private prisons. 
And as I pointed out, I believe that private prisons are a pull, just as the homeland security and the federalization of the, mili of the police being militarized is a push. We've got two things going on here, and there's a lot of corporate action pulling for the privatization of prisons, and there's a lot of very bad things going on as a result of that. They're guaranteed to have between 95 and 100% occupancy in these prisons. So that right there is a pull on the system to put people into prison. We just had a case in Arizona where a Republican representative slipped in at the last minute a $900,000 bonus to the private prison group, their GEO group. They're one of the largest prison corporations in America, a very large uh, corporation. And he said, uh, I didn't see a problem giving them a small increase. If you don't treat people fairly, they won't treat you fairly in the future. Well, what could we read out of that? <laughs> Uh, all but one Republican voted for the measure, but it got stripped out when people saw what was happening there. Now, this is also something that started with Ronald Reagan as part of the war on drugs, or as I like to call it, the war of drugs, because we got the government that is creating the system and then using it to attack our legal system as well as American citizens. But we've seen a lot of things happening with this private prison system, and we've seen this continuing on and on throughout the Democrat administrations. And there's an excellent article here from uh, a fellow who is, uh, oh, I've got the name right here, uh, Dave Hodge, editor of the Common Sense Show. He, he's in Arizona, and he says, this problem is not just my state's problem, it's your state's problem as well. It's in all of the states. And he points out that as we mentioned before, there's over 2 million inmates in American prisons, 1 in 743 people. The U.S. has only 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's prison population. Well, where does this go to? He says, this, he ties this back to the Obama administration. And he says, of course, and we all know that Obama could stop this, but he does have some ties. He connects the corporate dots to a company called uh, Vanguard, actually it's an investment fund, Vanguard Windsor 2 fund, which Obama is involved in. But of course, it doesn't matter whether they're Democrats or Republicans, they are all there to work for the giant corporations, whether it's creating private prisons or whether it's doing a massive transfer of wealth from the American people to the insurance companies. You can always count on our politicians to step up to the plate. But he makes an interesting point. He talks about these private prisons and he says, this unholy practice is no less exploitative than the slave labor abuses of the past. And as in all forms of slavery, it is being fueled by profit. Mark my words, FEMA camps will be privatized as well. And he's got a, uh, a uh, case here that he makes in Arizona, but there's actually a case in Idaho. And they have taken over the private prison there after horrifying allegations of corruption, of theft and of brutality. This is from a different corporation. This is from a Nashville, Tennessee-based Corrections Corporation of America. They were contracted to run the state prison in uh, Idaho since 1997. Taxpayers currently pay that company $29 million a year to operate a 2,081-bed prison. They say the prison has been the subject of multiple lawsuits alleging rampant violence understaffing, gang activity, and contract fraud. They acknowledged last year that they had falsified staff reports that they'd given to the state showing that they had thousands of hours. That's only part of it. Once they get people locked up, then they use them as slave labor. It kind of helps to take the bite out of losing business to the Chinese. You know, we can get our own slave labor here. And of course, once the people get into prison, they make it so difficult on them. The outside, they have a 70% of the people come back. Can you do that with a restaurant? I don't think so. We're going to be right back with some more news, and we've got a review of Captain America coming up at the bottom of the hour. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans 
live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivation.